Hello everybody, welcome back to Football Club Barcelona. It's been literally a few minutes for me, but it's going to be days too, I think, between these episodes. It's, uh, yeah, I wanted to get back into this and uh, and to to keep testing the changes that we're doing because it's not working out exactly the way we want, especially scoring chances. What was our expected goals in the last game, actually? I didn't look at that. I was supposed to look at that. Or good at all. Pass is completed as high. Possession would be a lot higher if they calculated it differently, but that's the way it is. Problems. Frankie De Jong's going to play instead of Gavi just because he's tired, and we're going to roll with this. Uh, yeah, this goes back to no longer staying narrow because he's going to be there. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'll change him to fullback attack rather than wingback support. See what relationship we get with there with the movements, and we'll see how this goes. Assistant manager says, show everybody the recent praise is justified. I don't know what recent praise they've been getting, but that is not deserved. I like how Fatty gets onto the ball, and Unabelli gets it, plays Derek Garcia. He's got an option to go around if he wants to. Pedri plays it across to Erling Haaland, the right hand side plays it across to Isaac. See, I don't like him doing that really. Like, yeah, I don't really want him to be that far wide because then he sort of has to cross it. I don't want him to have to do that. They throw in for Levante, they get the ball into Lazari Livakovic, and we'll see how we look here in our setup. That's what we're looking at here. Let's have a look. So it's really well spread from these two. He's going to stay on Eric Goss. He's going to turn with it, hopefully. Um, so he's screened. Pedri's just gone and got himself marked and screened the ball into the winger. It's just... I can't ask Pedri to do anything else anymore to go higher. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what he's doing. And... Aqua gets onto it. See, like this Mazala like movement here, yeah, but you'll see in a second. The young's okay. Like, the ball goes there, right, and now there. So, that little movement there, all that does in this context is screen the ball to our own player, and he's marked anyway. So, it's useless. So frustrating because the Mazala has the best movements of the central fielders when it gets past this point, but before it, it's just it's awful. With some of those movements that they, they make with the tactics that I create anyway. It may not be the same for everybody. Like now he's gone at least high. He's gone a bit too high. He's just staying up there. Now we will revert to the other side. Pedri gets it, plays it across to Erling Haaland with the early switch. Okay, that's fine. What can you do with it, Erling? Oh, he's still got it. Plays it across. Alexander Isaac should have been a goal. We're going to change our Chavi roll to a central fielder attack with no room for position. Let's see what that does. This is the first hole actually straight after it. Guy gets it on the left hand side. Going to cross it. De Jong. Yep. Yeah. Eric Garcia, okay, that's fine. See, so when it goes left, I'd hope they make a little movement to get on the ball. Pressing forward, he's just going to stand there and not get on it, which is not the best. Pedri plays across to Erling Haaland, okay, that's fine. Erling Haaland plays across to De Jong, good football, should have been a goal, there we go, not bad. Better movements, better combination play, we'll take that. The big switch, that's okay from time to time. Got a little Chavi making his run. Uh, Erling Haaland, our Messi, yeah, do you know what, I don't mind that. That's not a bad effort. Uh, it's a shame that he didn't just play that across the opposite, but he got there in the end, okay, we'll take that. So it continues on to Fati, to Gaia, Gaia to De Jong, to Pedri, to Isaac, Haaland, that was nearly perfect. We're getting there. Better movements now, isn't it? You've seen he's, he's in those dangerous areas that you'd expect Messi to sort of be in, and breaking through on goal in those scenarios, well, that's good. I say, keep it up, second half. Haaland immediately, Eric Garcia to Unumbele to Pedri, we're going to ping it around and hold on to the ball, that's okay. Attempt one pass into Alexander Isaac and it's lost, it's not good. I might have to change it to a false nine. But maybe we tweak this in from just being a Barcelona 2008-2009 save. We'll spend two seasons on that. Then we'll do one season in his third season and go to his 2010-2011 his team where we can just play a false nine and be done with the uh, the rest of it. Uh, Haaland gets onto it on the right-hand side. He's going to have to cut back here. Don't just cross this. Good, good, better play. No, that was the wrong decision. What he should have done was once he got here... Yeah, so once he gets there... He should be going through on goal and finishing that. Like that's that's exactly the kind of area you'd see Messi get into. He's taking a touch towards God. This player comes in and he bends it in the far corner. But instead, I think he just feels like he's getting closed off. So he then looks for a pass and just loses. Oh, he does then play it back, doesn't he? To a non-threatening position. So we're creating the opportunities. It's just the way that the players are taking those opportunities compared to real life is where the attack, the tactic is breaking down. And this is why when you do recreations, you've always got to tweak it to the match engine, tweak it to the game. Because it's not just always as simple as it would be in real life, you know. So that's where this comes in. That's a really risky ball and unnecessary from you, Erling. And then Bale wins it back for us. Plays it to De Jong. To Isaac, good little play. We'll take that, though. That's better. So central forward attack is going to be the way to go oh, on the right-hand side. Castro really can go on. And then Ansu Fatty can come off. And we'll throw on Adiemi on the left-hand side. And Haaland just scored to make it three by the looks of it. VR yeah, check. We'll see the replay of it because I missed it. Oh no, it's going to be giving us a goal. Okay, I missed this completely. And we've got two players surrounding the box here. Dion gets it. Stays at the far post. Oh, nice. No, okay, we'll take that. 
Game finishes 3-0 to Barca. We'll say good work. That was that was good. I will then see you in a second now for the for the Madrid game for the El Clasico. And we'll play Real Madrid after play this game against Porto off camera. See you in a second. Welcome back, everybody. And we did win the game midweek against Porto. We won it 2-1. They had a red card. It was pretty self explanatory really there we did play the backup team as well that wasn't the first team so we did pretty well to win 2-1 and not have to play a single player that's going to play today in today's game then we're going to play Real Madrid with this team here as you can see it's our first team pretty standard stuff the most important bit of news though is I didn't really notice this till after I'd stopped recording the previous part was that Sevilla actually played Real Madrid and they lost so we are now three points ahead with a game in hand so all is good if we can win this actually they if we're three points ahead with the game in hand they must have lost again Oh, they did. Back-to-back -back defeats for Sevilla. Now, they are the bottle jobs here. They've lost away to Madrid and at home to Bilbao. Okay, that gives us a bit of breathing space again. Now, if we lost this game, it's still only three points. I'll have to play them again, so you never know. But anything other than a loss here to Madrid puts us back in the in, in the positive space of things. And, uh, yeah, a win, a win ends it. Draw keeps us ahead. And a loss would keep us within reason of being able to mess this all up. So let's go into the game and see what happens. As the manager says, we've been on a good run. Okay. It's down with Sochi. We get an unknown ballet into plays into Gavi. Gavi early on plays into Lazari. Interesting stuff. He's into Erling Haaland, who's going to play into Gavi. We're going to work this into somebody. Hopefully, the relentless. Yeah, that, I mean, I don't mind it every now and again because there were times when Iniesta would be like high and that would be on. But it's just as long as it doesn't happen too often, that's the only thing, right? Lazari has it and whips it across. God, Pedri at the back post and it's headed just wide. We are at home, so I expect us to, to definitely win. But if we don't win, to dominate the game completely is the expectation here. Benzema has it, gives it to Lazari, thank you very much. And I'm going to continue here with Numbele and Gavi whips it across to Isaac. And it's going to be a penalty. They had one at their place that frustrated me, so now we're going to get one back here in the league. And it's going to be a penalty. It's going to be 1 0 to Barcelona with Erling Haaland taking it. There you go, predicted the future. No worries here. Erling Haaland, 1 0 Barca. Thank you very much. There we go. What was interesting actually in the Porto game was that Pats and Dak did a really good job of dropping off the front line, linking up, and then breaking in behind late. Exactly how I'd expect Samuel Letu to, to have done it. But Alexander Isaac doesn't seem to do the same sort of stuff. Which is uh, weird. Still not entirely sure what to do about this role. This role is a bit frustrating for me. And trying to get him just on the last defender slightly more would be good. Get further forward. Let's put that on Nancy Fat and see what happens with, with that. I want to hear Barcelona. Lazari guy will play it short. Well, Aquan, I think as long as he's not offside here, that should be a goal. Rare to see a short goal, uh, short corner result in a goal like that these days. Is it going to stand? It might do. It's the longest check ever. It's allowed. Possession fluctuates between 56 and 58% currently in this game. Um, ooh, next change tactically then. What are we going to do here? This is definitely... I mean, really, something like that would be almost ideal for what you would want. Um, you try it? That looks ridiculous. What do you reckon? Dani Alves, Abidal's going to end up in this sort of area. In possession, that's going to look quite close, if, I, if I'm being honest. Our possession is just, just going to be a disgrace. So, And is this the game to be doing this? Is, is that the question? Oh, let's do it. Let's just do it. Pedri, get off the pitch. You've been terrible. Young goes on. Let's see what happens with this. Go on to comprehensive as well to see it play out. So defensively is going to be the problem because, well, Dani Alves is, is now a bit high in his pressing, isn't he? Because look at the back. He's not connected to the back three as it is. Because they're playing it like a three and a one. Okay, so let's just take him back and see what happens now when we do that it's after this highlight concludes. It, it looks like a back four now. And he gets left alone quite a lot. So in possession, though. Interesting. He needs to go a bit higher. Does Abidal? Yeah, maybe bring wide centre back attack might do the job. Let's see a whole lot here. Erling Haaland's. As yeah, the problem is. I mean, I don't know actually because that's. That's where I'd expect the Barcelona centre back to be. In that sort of area, anyway. You know, so I don't know. Maybe he doesn't need to be that far. Yeah, he's a bit too far up now. So now he's playing like a back three centre back. So maybe ball playing defender defend on this side. Is the correct way to go. So it'd be like Bork playing defender defend with stay wide more. Maybe that's the best way to go with it. 
That should work, actually. I can't see myself going to this long term because I just can't see it working defensively. The AI will just shred us down here at some point. But in certain patterns, certain movements is going to look really good, which is the, uh, the other thing to it. Eric Capital was in a good position there. No, that was not necessary. I suppose it worked if he would felt like it was on. That's okay. Going to get away though. No, Adiemi, there's our Messi. He nearly scored actually. Doesn't quite work. Possession hasn't really stayed up, and it's uh, yeah, not long term thing. This was only really just to go to to just test really while we're in a at least a semi comfortable position in the title race. Uh, I know I'm saying that we've just literally got ourselves back in front because we were behind or about to be behind, and we'll see what allowed a good win for us. Yeah, some positive steps again back in the right direction in terms of results, chances created, movements of certain players is all looking better again. We're rebalancing it back out. But we're probably going to get to a stage where we can start to succeed with what we've got. But then trying to tweak it again to improve is going to be the next challenge for us. One of these two could end up coming up in a, in a higher area. Now, I would normally have, you, if you think in your head, you think Xavi lower than Iniesta is what you think. But I don't know, maybe... Maybe having Chavi higher, but on a support duty that might make his movements from backwards and forwards, get on the board, get back high, something like that. That's a possibility of moving one of these two up one. I don't want to do that, but we might have to do that to recreate some better movements here and maybe better combination play with some of the number 10s and, and uh, this is some of the, uh, the the wide players and that, that kind of stuff. So, so, yeah, I feel a bit more positive now. The last two episodes, there was the two episodes previous. Um, yeah, that's much better in the football that we played, the results that we got, three wins in a row, two on camera, one off, and back to the way things should be. Big table looks like this, six points clear of Sevilla, we have to play them still at home, so we should be okay. Like That should, if anything, be a result for us, a win, or if not, a draw. And we drew away, so if we can draw, take the away goal out. So if we draw nil-nil at home, we're ahead on the head's head as well, so that's what we're looking to do. That's not what we're looking to do, we're looking to win, but we could... Get that as a positive result for us. Average possession goes down from 63 now to 62 just temporarily, but that does fluctuate by 1 or 2% depending on the games that you've just had. We just played a few games in a row away, plus Madrid, so it's always going to go down a little bit, but it's pretty much there. Still the most passes completed in the division, only just of Real Sociedad, who are high again this year, who start off slowly, but they've crept back up, haven't they, from last year. Pass for completion is at 92%. It's pretty good. Not quite at their level, but, you know, we score more goals and we're a better team, so... There is, there is that. Next episode then, uh, let's have a look. I was going to skip these two games here, but Granada are actually sick, so that's a good game to come back for. And Villarreal away is always an interesting one. And I think then the episode after that will probably be Malaga. And I don't know, actually, maybe Porto and Malaga. I was going to skip the Porto game, but technically it is only one goal. And it is potentially another just different kind of game to see the team play its tactic. So let's, let's come back for those. We'll come back for those two. We're out of Via Real. Then we'll come back for Porto and maybe Malaga. Maybe we skip one. No, we'll come back for Porto and Malaga. It's away from home. I think until we get it completely done, I don't want to miss too many games out while I'm not really changing too much because I feel like it's good to show you when I'm tweaking something, the positive and negative effects for it and why I'm thinking what I'm thinking. Because I might tweak something and you might go, yeah, okay, that's not as realistic as what we want for the, for the recreation, but that works better, so I'd rather do that. And you, So that's, that's why I like to do these things as well. This is to provide a blueprint for you to take and make it better. It's going to be a blueprint to get close, and then somebody else is going to add the finishing touches to it to say, add, one, to make it better, but two, also to put your own spin on it, because I think it's always good for people to, to do that if they want to do that. But then also, as a blueprint, it's still good enough as a blueprint that it can still win as it currently is. That's also very important. It's not just a blueprint that's not going to work. It's a blueprint that works, but you can tweak it to make it slightly more realistic, but maybe less results, or you can tweak it so it's got slightly better results, but slightly less realistic, or maybe hopefully both. Hopefully you can do both and get both. But that's that's how I like to view it. Like, it's going to be close. And it's going to take the best parts of both. It's going to be close. And then you can go and destroy the match engine and the rest of it, however you, you like to, to do it from a realism perspective or, or results. Or ideally, like I said, both. That is going to do the episode. Hope you enjoyed the series. Thank you very much for watching. And leave a comment and leave me feedback for what you're thinking. And if you're doing it yourself, all that kind of stuff. It's always good to read things and interact with people. Um, I'm enjoying this series. Enjoy reading all your comments. And with that being said, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.